Hi guys, it's Seja. So today's video is a little bit different. I'm going to be chatting with my mom who's all the way in India. If you don't know, I'm in the US right now. I was supposed to come back to India three days ago, but I had to cancel all my plans because of the current state. I thought I should try to help in whatever way I can. So I've got my mom. Um, so hello. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anjali Kumar. I'm a gynecologist and obstetrician and I'm Sejal's mom. And of course, I run the YouTube channel called Metri, which deals with women's issues. So what is the current state right now? If you open social media right now, it's very confusing, distressing, overwhelming. We are dealing with a very severe uh, second wave of uh, COVID-19 and so much so that the entire country is actually fallen apart. About afternoon, the number of COVID positive patients in the country had reached almost 16.9 million and the number of deaths in the country had almost touched about 190,000 in the country, which is like uh, really insane. So much so that on an average, we are getting uh, about 3 lakh new cases every day. Today's numbers have been actually much more than this. What to do if I or someone in my family gets COVID? Which test do we have to take? So we all know if somebody is having uh, fever, uh, dry cough, some kind of a tiredness, malaise. Uh, these symptoms could be the symptoms of COVID. Some people might experience loss of taste and smell. Uh, these days we are also seeing patients coming with uh, uh, GI symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms, which means that they have diarrhea, abdominal pain. Some people also have uh, rash on the skin. So in case you notice anything, definitely please talk to your doctor and you can get various tests done. So basically we have three tests which are available these days. The most uh, sensitive test is uh, RT-PCR. Now this test is taken as a swab from a nasal passage. So basically there is a swab stick which is introduced into a nasal passage. Uh, it's a fairly accurate test but these days because of the load of so many people asking for this test, the TAT for this test is about two to three days. Then we also have a test which is called the antigen test. The rapid test, it is less expensive and the results could be uh, available to us within four to six uh, hours but many times this test is not really accurate it's just that it is a rapid test so in case it is positive we know it is positive but in case it is negative we are not very sure whether the person is negative the same is actually with the rt-pcr also though to a lesser extent then we have antibody uh, tests actually measure the antibody levels in your blood uh, somebody who's taken a vaccine also there, also the antibody test will come uh, positive. The gold standard or the test which is usually recommended is the RT-PCR test. And in case your RT-PCR comes positive, I know people actually go into a panic mode. Oh, my test is positive. My test is positive. But please remember in about 80 to 85 percent of the cases, the disease is usually mild. It can be managed at home. And uh, you just need to have a, a teleconsultation or video consultation with your doctor. And one of the basic things which you are supposed to do is obviously keep uh, measuring your temperature in case your fever goes up. You are supposed to take a simple paracetamol. Make sure that you are well hydrated. You are taking good amount of warm liquids and you can do some steam, you can do gargles, you can even suck those lozenges. So, you know, you have strep cells and swollen and things like that. People are taking vitamin C and zinc. So these are multivitamins, but none of the scientific studies actually say that uh, taking all this will reduce the disease. But yes, if it makes you feel happy, please go ahead and take it. I know people are just eating antibiotics like that. So AZ and doxycycline, remember. Uh, COVID-19 is a viral disease and the antibiotics do not work for the viral diseases. It's only if your doctor is suspecting that you could be having a secondary infection, then only you are supposed to take these antibiotics. In case at home, 
you notice any deterioration which means that your fever is going very high or if you're getting some kind of a respiratory discomfort which means that you feel tightness in your chest and you can't breathe then obviously this is the time to go to the uh, hospital you can also uh, buy a pulse oximeter at home and you can measure your oxygen saturation at home and typically if your oxygen saturation is falling below 90 to 94 then probably yes it's the time to go to the hospital please do not panic 80 to 85 person case the disease will settle down on its own can you talk more about the hospital bed crisis what i've seen and what i understand is that anyone who gets covid positive and probably has little symptoms there is more of a panic uh, or a paranoia which goes around at that point of time and Everybody gets into an insane uh, mode of holding, uh, uh, you know, the medications and, uh, you know, trying to contact doctors and searching for oxygen cylinders and hospital beds. So I just want to tell people that number one, if you or somebody else has been diagnosed with COVID-19, First of all, do not panic. Talk to your doctor. In about 80% of the cases, the person just requires a home monitoring and uh, just a monitoring of the symptoms. But in case you notice any uh, deterioration of the symptoms, you are supposed to just get in contact with the doctor and then search for the, uh, you know, the doctor is going to sort of tell you which bed and which hospital. I understand these days getting a bed is very, very difficult. Uh, but now we have the government portals uh, which are there. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a Delhi government portal and uh, you know there is my government portal. So there are a lot of uh, authentic government uh, portals which are constantly updating the bed status. The beds could be simply an oxygen bed or it could be a ICU ventilation bed. I know it's very very challenging but uh, we all are supposed to keep our calms and uh, not uh, get into a hoarding mode i've seen you know any person people these days are uh, wanting to buy remdesivir uh, injection uh, at any cost people are uh, i what i hear is actually this drug is being hoarded and black marketed in the market uh, number one we all need to understand that it's a drug which not every COVID person requires. There are specific indications of remdesivir injection. Uh, it has to be, it's an antiviral drug and it has to be used in the first 10 days of the illness in case the person is having a moderate to the severe disease. Not every person who has COVID-19 will require remdesivir. Injection is entirely in the government control. It is now issued only by the patient's name. Mm. Hopefully now onwards it will not be hoarded and it will not <clears> be black marketed. If you need a hospital bed and you know these days everyone is just talking about even if you have contacts with a doctor or with a hospital, it's still not possible. Hmm. So uh, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, we need to understand the, kind, the number of cases and the number of hospital beds. There is a massive mismatch in that. Mm. But you need to understand that uh, you have to be in touch with your doctor, the doctor who is uh, managing the patient and then the doctor will probably help you arranging the bed. And of course, you also need to keep an eye on the government portals which are constantly updated, constantly updated that you can actually see a real time information. The contacts or the other kind of uh, things don't work. So. Uh, Hmm. It's, a, it's a sad situation. Hai. Actually, I really feel uh, we all probably should have done a better preparation for the second uh, wave. The history of the pandemics actually say that the second waves do come and when they come, they are more serious. You know, all of us as a general population, somehow a few weeks back, everyone actually forgot about COVID-19 and people were busy going for parties and shopping and Aray, but what can we do? Like government has to arrange hospital beds. They have to arrange the See, medicines. See, people and need to understand that masks. government can't do everything. It is the no. It is Mama. the no, no, no. It is <laughs> they, the collective responsibility. If everyone continues to be absolutely irresponsible, 
Of course, I'm not saying that the government does not have a role to play. Yes, of course, the preparedness could have been much better in terms of hospital beds and ventilate, ventilators and oxygen and everything that goes without saying. But somewhere as citizens also, we also needed to be much more responsible collectively. And so how can we sitting at home help? Um, like, for example, me, I'm away from you guys and everyone. Yes, of course, we need to be constantly telling our friends and family, yes, even though we may be uh, apart by so many uh, miles, but we are still together today thanks to technology. We can see each other, we can talk e to each other. And we need to understand that all of us are depressed in our own ways. Somebody is depressed because of loss of job. Somebody is depressed because somebody's uh, family is not well. Somebody has lost a family member. But talking to friends and family, constantly telling each other that yes, we are all in it together and uh, you know, we'll collectively fight it out and this show too shall pass. So yeah, I know it's difficult but then constantly reminding each other yes, we are together into it and constantly genuinely trying to help each other. Are you still going to work and as a doctor, how are you managing this? We are doctors, but we are also human beings. Jitna dar aapko lagta hai, utna hi dar hume bhi lagta hai. So, if you want me to look after you, you also have to look after me. And of course, you know, when I go to the hospital, that thought, uh, I mean, I just start my day like a regular day. You know, I have my OT list, I know this is the patient who has to deliver. So that thought sometimes comes that yes, I'm worried what will happen, but that that thought that my presence is going to help someone that is that thought supersedes everything I, I know many times my daughter my son everyone asks me mama why do you have to go you can always sit at home but in our dictionary that option does not exist doctors we take very serious precautions I think till date most of the doctors uh, are able to sort of save themselves yes of course a lot of doctors also have been infected but most of the doctors are able to take care of themselves because we are very very careful please don't underestimate covid 19 you know i see people going for parties and shopping and a lot of other things and not using masks so the latest cdc guidelines actually say that now we are supposed to be using double uh, masks so which means do mask pehenne hai so that means six layers of masks so remember whenever you have to wear any mask whether it is a cloth mask or n95 you are supposed to hold it from the side strings and wear it like this that this part is nicely fitted nicely tight i've seen when patients come to me actually their mask is either hair or hair or sometimes even hair i mean it is one more like an accessory so make sure that your nose and mouth both are nicely protected. Now if at all you want to adjust, never touch it from the front. Never, never. If somebody enters in my clinic and touching like this, I, I just lose my temper. So if at all you need to adjust, adjust it like this and nicely tighten it from here. So at no under no circumstances, you are supposed to touch your mask from the front. So that's it. Thank you. Mama for all the information. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and like this video if you found it helpful and share it with anyone who needs it right now. Stay safe, take care of everyone around you and I'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Stay safe.